Hello folks, welcome to my tech hub. In this video, we are going to learn about how to implement a OTP verification service. For security reasons, many software applications don't store the raw OTP value. Then the question comes into your mind, how does the OTP verification works without storing the OTP value? Here is the secure solution that is hashing technique. Instead of storing the plain OTP, the system has to store the hash value which is generated from the OTP. To generate the hash value, we can use one-way message digest algorithms. Those are MD5, SHA-1, SHA-256, SHA-512, and few other. These message digest algorithms generates a unique hash value for the given input. That will be in hexadecimal format. To generate the same hash value, you have to give the same input. You can use these algorithms at the time of OTP generation and you can return the plain OTP to the end user after storing the hash value of the OTP. When you get an active OTP for the verification process, then you have to generate the hash value for the incoming OTP and then compare it with the stored hash value. If both the hash values are same, then you can consider the verification process is succeeded. This way, even system admins won't even get to know what is the actual OTP. Before jumping into the coding part, Please do like the video if you find it useful. Here I'm creating a OTP class with three properties. Those are identifier, expiry date of OTP and the hash value to hold the encrypted text of a plain OTP. If you notice here, I have not created a property to hold the plain OTP. To store the runtime OTP information, I'm creating a concurrent hash map, which is a thread safe object. This concurrent hash map object we have to use at the time of OTP verification process to get the end user associated OTP object. And in the real time implementation, we should not refer any in memory solution to store the OTP related information. We require a private method to generate a four digit OTP. Here I'm using a random class to generate the four digit OTP. Another critical private method that is for generating the hash value for the plain OTP. Here I'm creating an instance of a SHA-256 which is not a thread safe object. That's the reason I'm creating a new object within the method itself. And the message digest method returns a byte array which we need to convert into hexadecimal format. Now I'm gonna use both the private methods in another private method. This method is responsible for creating the OTP object with all the information including the hash value and that object we are gonna store in concurrent hash map that we created initially with the user specific identifier. If you notice I have given 60 seconds as a OTP expiry time. Now I'm going to create a public method that should return a plain OTP to end user. In real time implementation here we need to integrate with the message service provider to send a message to end consumer. In the same way, validate OTP method is going to reuse the private methods that we created earlier. But this time we generate hash value for the incoming OTP. And also we have to verify the respective OTP object is expired or not. If it is not expired, then only we have to compare the hash value of incoming OTP with the stored hash value. Finally, we have to create the public method for validating the incoming OTP. Internally, it's going to reuse the private method that we created above. It is time for actual fun part. Let's test with the positive test case that is a valid OTP. And then we'll test with the invalid OTP test case where I'm going to pass the wrong OTP. And then OTP not found when we encounter an invalid user identifier. 